and good evening once again. I am glad that you have tuned in because from today on it's going to get pretty awesome. You've done the tutorial, you have your Emacs now. Chances are you watched some other videos, maybe you read up on Emacs, you know, just to get you going. Now, this video will be dedicated to something very, very important and the main feature of Emacs, or basically what sets Emacs apart from all the other editors. Um, Emacs, as mentioned previously, is at its core an interpreter for eLisp. Your text editor is an interpreter. If this does not blow your mind just about now, then you simply have not yet understood the implications. First of all, allow me to now switch buffers here. I am in, at the start GNU Emacs buffer, the startup screen. Control XP, switch to buffer, I want to go to stretch buffer. And at the top of the scratch buffer you will have um, this, and then this buffer is for text that is not saved, and for Lisp evaluation. That's important. If you have um, some experience with, say, Lisp, you will know that these are comments. These are lines that are ignored by the interpreter. Now allow me to show you a little bit of Lisp. Let's do the ba most basic of Lisp functions. Uh, addition. In Lisp you have everything inside parentheses, but that's true for both Lisp and ELISP and Clojure and so on. The function name is in the first little block and you have arguments. So this basically in every other programming language would be 2 plus 3, but Lisp is a bit different like that. Now you know how to invoke functions manually and if you don't then let me show you. You do it with meta x, meta being the alt key. And let me evaluate if or use a function. Yes, this editor does have functions called evaluate. Why can't I eval buffer? Yeah, eval need not evaluate, my bad. And after I do, you will notice that absolutely nothing happened. However, if I evaluate the last and last expression only, which you can do by navigating, um, to the end of an expression and control X, control E, down here in the mini buffer you will get the result. Crap, you'll get the result. Let me do it again so you can see. Some garbled data that we don't care about for now and five. I use Emacs as a calculator in this scratch buffer. I do all of my math inside of here because I can. Now this is just one thing. You can do basic addition, boohoo, big deal. The implication is, however, that you can write your own functions, define your own variables, and add your own external functionality. This is why Emacs is still alive and doing great, because people actually actively write ELISP for extensions, or packages as they are called. That's one of the best things that I can imagine what could happen to an editor. Now, you know, doing basic math is all fine and dandy, but how is it useful? One of the things that is you know, that kind of blows my mind whenever I think about it. 70% of Emacs code is written in ELISP, on top of set, interpreter, and core functionality. It, there is variables and there is functions there. As you can see, we just used a function. You can use all the functions you want with MX, as long as they are interactive. This is something that we are going to get to many videos from now on, where we are actually going to write our own code for our editor. But you can call all these functions there's so many functions that you can call, and you can write your own ones. Always do control G when you want to get out of something. There is something that I would like to show you um, before we end this video, because this is just a demonstration of what this is capable of. Let's say that I want to get rid of the toolbar. The toolbar is annoying. Do you know, do you see the bezel on this? Is this like, like some sort of iPhone design choice or whatever? I don't like GNOME. I don't like, I don't know why I picked GNOME. A lot of space is being taken by this menu bar. Space that could be used for text. How do we disable it? Well, first of all, you can't just right click on it and get rid of it. You have to write some ELISP. Just like that, you, you disable it with code. Also, let's write some ELISP. Let's write tool bar mo tool bar mode pass in a negative value 
go to the end of the line, control E, now let's execute it, control X, control E, and the toolbar is gone. That's pretty useful, I would say. Now, this right here is also something that I'm not very fond of. This is the menu bar. We can also get rid of the menu bar. You probably already know how to, because I just showed you. All you have to do is substitute tool for um, menu. So let's write this. Menu bar mode has negative value. Execute it, and there it is. It's gone. The same uh, is applicable to the scroll bar. Some people like having a scroll bar, I personally don't, but the idea behind this series is also that I'm going to show you all the options that you have, and you decide what you, you know, what's your thing and what isn't. I'm going to disable the scroll bar. Um, you can keep it around. As I said, you can even keep the menu bar around if you really want to. I disable those. How do we do this? Again, write an expression, and at the end of the expression, when your cursor is there, control X, control E. There it is. And at the bottom of the mini buffer it shows you what it evaluated to, in this case nil, which is, for those of you who don't really like um, scripting or interpreted languages, and you're all C puritans, that's like null. That's about it. Now, okay, we disabled those. Um, doing this, every single time you start Emacs is going to get tedious very, very quickly. We have three lines here, imagine having a thousand lines of configuration. This is why Emacs, at its, when it starts, looks for a specific file on your file system. It looks for multiple ones, actually, but there's only one we are going to be using. And then executes all the code that is in there. You can write programs in your configuration file. This is precisely what Emacs configuration is. It's a script. Now this is all fine and dandy. Where's the file you might uh, yeah you might ask? And let's find it. Control F, Control F. In your home directory, you are going to have um, a directory called .emacs.t, and in there, uh, you probably won't have much autosave lists. You can you probably it will probably be automatically generated. It's not something you create yourself. The file we are going to create is called init.el. El being the file extension for elis. Now let's go to this file and let's grab all we had written in just a second ago and put it in here. Let's switch buffers to scratch, mark all this, and then kill it with Ctrl W. Let's change buffers again to init DL and yank it back. For the Vim users that are confused right about now, for in Emacs, yanking means pasting. Killing is cutting, and well, copying is copying. Or, well, copying is yanking, and yanking is pasting. I'm not sure what, you know, what gave birth to this naming convention, but it works. Now that we have copied everything into our init.dl file, let's save it, Control x Control s and let's close the Emacs, Control x Control c This is something I really don't like doing. Now when we launch Emacs the next time, the menu bar is gone, the toolbar is gone, and the scroll bar is gone, because it looked for the file and executed everything within. You may start to actually realize what is happening and how powerful just this very thing is. You can write entire scripts, you can write software to be used within Emacs and it's going to simply work because it has this built-in interpreter. In the next video we are going to set up the package manager. Yes, Emacs actually has a built-in package manager. We are going to set it up in a way that, is, that it's easy to use. And then we'll download some packages. And we'll start customizing because I really don't think that Emacs is a very good editor by default. I think that by default it looks it doesn't look particularly great. That's one thing. Um, it lacks a lot of functionality that in my opinion should be obvious to have. But it doesn't. So packages. And with, you can install as many packages as you'd like, we'll get to it. I hope you join me in the next video, because it's actually going to, uh, it's going to get pretty good. Now that you understand what Emacs is capable of, we should probably use um, this power and create, and you can start crafting the editor that is going to last you pretty much a lifetime. Thank you for watching, I hope you stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Actually. Actually, no.
there is something else I need to tell you. There is something that really bothers a lot of people and uh, the tutorial hasn't mentioned it. Control X, Control Plus makes the font bigger. For the next videos I am going to be using a larger font so it's easier for you to see. A lot of people complain um, from my experience that when they started using Emacs they had this default font size and it was too small and it was difficult to read. Um, and probably in two videos we are going to actually change the font, change the theme and so on and so forth. But this, I thought I should mention this, this is actually really important. And you can also obviously use Control X uh, dash or Control X, uh, Control X minus, yes, Control X, Control minus to make it smaller. Alright, so again, thanks for watching, bye bye and stay tuned.